Good AP2 engine, huh? With only 50,000 miles. Hmm. All right. It might be worth a look. Let's go take a look. Down the old dusty trail to go get the S2000. Sunday, although it's ugly, it's super practical. Barely has over 100,000 miles. Doing good, but it'll be pimping once I get this S2000 if it turns out to be good. All right. I just got it. This thing is fantastic. I love this thing already, but it's dark out, and so I'm gonna get going so I can pay attention to the road, but it is everything I want it to be. I'll take a video in the morning when it's lighter out. Hey everyone, welcome to Garage Topics. What I have behind me is the Garage Topics Honda S2000. I am stoked to have this here. It's been something that I've been trying to work to have for a while, and it's finally here. I got a lot of stories about how I got it, how I got to this point, what our next steps are. I just wanna bring you guys along for the experience. I haven't done a single thing to the car yet. I haven't cleaned it, I haven't touched it, nothing. I wanna show you exactly what state it is in so that we can, when we build upon projects and add things to what we know where we started, I'll tell you how much I paid for it, what the condition's in, what it had, etc. so that if you wanna do this kind of project, you know where to start from. And I hope I made a good decision by this car so that you can have a baseline to follow upon. Now for Black Ring, let me show you what's in the car. So what are we looking at? This is a model year 2000, the first year they made the S2000. Uh, it's got some slight quirks to it. Like, as you can t probably tell from the front, it has the JDM fresh red Honda badges. Here, yeah. And it also has some AP2 headlights, which is the second generation of the S2000. I don't know if I haven't told you guys before, but I've never owned a Honda. This is the first Honda that I've ever owned, which for a while, I didn't want a Honda because everyone else had one, but that's kind of stupid. There's a reason why a lot of people have them. This fits the bill. I don't care what brand it is. I just like the cars. The headlights have been changed. The badging has been changed. It has the stock AP1 wheels. It's white. Not my first choice of color, but honestly, I'd never seen one in person before, and after seeing it in person, it looks fantastic. The interior is pretty good shape. Uh, it is red. That's exactly what I was looking for. Uh, only certain colors come with red. The previous owner changed out the carpets to be black, which is a nice touch. I really, really like the black dash with the red seats and red door cards. Uh, I think it looks super fresh. The driver's seat is a little bit worn, but that's to be expected. This car is basically 17 years old now, which is crazy to me because it still looks fantastic. It has the stock AP1 taillights. I'm kind of a fan, I'm not super sure on that. It's got the fresh JDM Red Birch Sick. It's missing or I guess it's not missing. It doesn't have the stock Honda equipped spoiler. I really like those, so I'll probably be adding that in the future. Um, as you can tell down here, it's got a little bit of an exhaust. Sick. It has the Comtech dual exhaust. Sounds really good. It's stainless. Uh, there's a couple stains in it actually, so I don't know how stainless, what that actually means, but we'll get those cleaned up. Unlock it. Ooh, I forgot to mention, got some LEDs. Thank you, previous owner. Trunk popper walk works. It's got the light in here. It's missing the spare, and it's missing that carpet as well, but these S2000 trunks are rather big. I'd like to get the spare in there. I'll take it out of there when going autocrossing and stuff like that, which I plan to do with this car, but for da daily driving it around every now and then, I would like that in there. The paint itself is in pretty good shape. There's some small imperfections that I'll go over right now. It's a 17-year-old car. It's actually been daily driven for a while. This side, not so much, but yeah, you can see it there. It's developing a little signs of rust right around the fender. There's a black trim piece, which I think is just trapping moisture. This side isn't too bad. Unfortunately, the other side is starting to show signs of rust. It's not structural, so I'm not gonna get screwed like the truck, or at least I hope. But here is the worst. You can see how it's just starting to bubble here. And that's not good for Club Dirty. We gotta fix that. So that's gonna probably be one of my first projects. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to take this bumper off, strip this down here, probably strip it up to here to make sure there's no rust left over. Again, this is a little bit of rust in here, just surface rust. 
and we'll take care of that so it does not spread because I've seen some of these where the entire fender is just rusted out. We don't want that. Other than that, uh, other imperfections, unfortunately the hood. The hood is not going to rust, it's aluminum, um, but when working on the engine, the previous owner left a wrench on the valve cover and I don't know if you can see it, you kind of can. It's dimpled right there, which is no good. All right, let's take a look at the inside. The windshield is original, I believe. There's tons of chips, some bird poop right there. There's one significant chip, it'll pass inspection, but it's just old, probably needs to be replaced. The trim here, you can see, is kind of just held in by some tape. Uh, let's go inside. The door lock actuators do not work, so when I use the, where's the thing at? When I use the good old key fob, it doesn't actually do anything. It'll, make, it'll actually lock the car with the engine deactivation stuff, but it won't lock the doors. So I'll fix that relatively easy. Um, it has upgraded the radio cover for an AP2. The previous owner before the previous owner did that, so freebie. I don't know much about the shift now, but I think it's an AP1 stock, but it's really good condition, so this will stay. It also has the AP2 cover, I believe. Uh, I think the original AP1s just had carpet here where this is like a leather, so that's a nice touch. Things I would have done. Um, behind here, stock stereo. It sounds terrible. I'm not a stereo snob, but it sounds really bad. You can't hear anything. Um, dash is in good shape, just needs a cleaning. There's no cracks as far as I can tell. How many miles are on this thing? Let's see. All right, so 118,346, which isn't too bad for a year 2000. Um, about the range I was looking at, uh, I wanted it lower miles just because I wanted a mechanically sound car. I didn't want to have to deal with massive issues. But that's where the next topic leads me to, the Frankenstein of this. Let's find the engine popper thing. Nope, noob with the Honda. All right. Fresh cup holder. Anyway, all right, let's get to the engine. All right. So the AP1s, they have a F20C engine, which is a two liter, rest of 9,000 RPM, like the gauge cluster says. Oh, look, F20, nope, it's an F22. The previous owner bought the car with a blown engine, knew that. Uh, he decided to put a F22C in it, which is the 2.2 liter, same horsepower in the 240 range, but about 10 more torque numbers. Uh, need to Google the numbers, I'll put it in the description because I forget right now and I don't want to get shamed on the internet. But the engine, as it currently sits, has about 55,000 miles on it, which to me was very attractive. I mean, it would be nice to rev to 9,000. You technically can with this engine, but kind of might blow it up. Also, AP1s have that retainer issue where the valve retaining valve retainers underneath the valve cover are known to crack and drop a valve and blow up the engine. This doesn't have that, it has upgraded internals. From what I can tell, it doesn't burn any oil, at least that's what the owner told me, we'll find out. I, haven't, I changed the oil the first day I got it. Oil looked good. One of the easiest oil changes that I've ever done, it was simple. Um, speaking of, the previous owner supplied me with his own homemade wooden ramps, which make jack, putting this on jack stands and a jack super easy. Just some wood, I'll go into those more later, but put those out. Change the filter, which is right in there, if I can find it, and it's too dark. Basically, it was like a 10 minute job, which is one of the quickest I've ever done. Uh, it also has Mishimoto red radiator hoses. I'm not sure how much of a fan I am of those, because it kind of looks kind of like ghetto, I guess, but if they don't leak and they hold up, fine by me. Some of the other mods that this thing has is a PLM header. It sounds good, you can hear the sound whooshing, it apparently adds horsepower, I guess, but I guess I won't know until I put on Dano, but Dano says it's pretty good. Also, the stock airbox is removed, the same hose coming from the stock airbox, just to a Canon air filter. I would like to change this out because it's, it's, although it sounds cool, it's probably just sucking in hot air from the headers which ain't cool in my book. The, when the engine was pulled, it had its clutch replaced, another thing that was appealing to me. It has a AP1 flywheel. It also has a competition st stage two clutch. The previous owner planned on supercharging this eventually, so that's why I went with that dress of a, of a clutch. It's taken me a little bit getting used to. I'll show you in the next video what I mean. Hopefully I won't stall it in the video and sound like an idiot. 
last mod that it has, different engine and transmission mounts. It has the innovative 75A, which is a mild, not a full street, not a full race right in between. Only in complaint I have is at idle, it has a slight vibration in the cabin. It makes me feel like I'm cool, but if this was my main only car, I might not like it that aggressive. It has the stock air pump removed, so it has the uh, forge block off plates and is is racing simulator which gets rid of the check engine light apparently it's cheaper than buying a new air pump um, the wheels they're in decent shape uh, probably needs new brakes the previous owner drove this in winters and stuff so this is like kind of a all season snow tire if you will that he said he put on the backs in the winter so I don't plan on ever driving this in the winter so these might need to go soon also, I don't know if you can tell, like the bumper itself has like, needs, needs some better clamps to push this down, I guess, they're missing. I checked the Carfax, it has had been in two minor accidents. It's not a rebuilt build title, it's a clean title, so good for that. Only issue you might have, which is actually a good thing for me, is that on the title, it has incorrect mileage. The previous owner, when he signed the title, checked that box, the mileage on the frame is exact to what the title is, but he checked the other one, I guess, because the engine was different, which is probably gonna make it worth less in the future, but that's a better incentive for me to not try and sell this car anytime soon. That and I like it, but something to think about. So no rebuilt title, but it does have that inconsistent mileage thing, which I know isn't true, but the next owner may not agree with. How did I come to buy this S2000? I found it on Craigslist. I, it also was on the S2KI forums. I've been looking around for a while. Uh, originally, this just had one picture up. It was like white, eh, okay. So I asked him, did they have any pictures of the interior because it was red. Not full red, they made them in red dashes, which I thought was kind of ugly. If it had the red seats, black dash, I'll give it a look. Sure enough, sent me some pictures that had that. So we started talking, started reading up on the idea, like how do you do the engine swap? What's the deal with that? Uh, it doesn't run on an aftermarket ECU, the engine computer, it runs on the stock AP1 year 2000 engine computer. So it has the dash that goes all the way up to 9000 RPM, which means you technically could rev this up to 9000 RPM, but it's not advised. So it's basically an old car, just don't floor it all the way up to 9000 RPM, just use your brain and shift before that. You can shift up to 8500 right on the forums. I don't know, I'm not an engineer. It all, everything operates as standard, has air conditioning, has everything, runs fine. I haggled on the price. Uh, someone else actually did, and I just offered what they paid for it because I felt it was a fair deal. So it's a 2000 Honda S2000. It's had, I think I'm the fifth owner technically. It has had some minor fender benders, but everything looks perfectly. It drives perfectly straight. There's no creaks in it. it drives dead straight down the road. It has a little bit of rust on it. Has some bodywork issues. Um, engine has 50,000 miles, so that would add the value. When I look at cars, I base it on Kelly Blue Book value. I try and buy around the trade-in value, because that, that's a pretty good deal, if you ask me. This car, uh, private party retail value, with the mileage on it as a stock form, I think good condition is, was 7,500 bucks. Where if you did the same equation for this car with 50,000 miles, it was like 13,000 bucks. So pretty big range and didn't include the rust on it. So. Based on how legitimate the previous owner was, he had it for four years, he, not just buying it, trying to make a quick buck. He spent a lot of time on it. It's got a lot of effort into it. And it's been owned by an adult. It hasn't been cambered, stanced, all that crap. I paid 8,000 uh, bucks. I'm not gonna count taxes and all that stuff like that, but that'll give you a good reference. I'm in Virginia. If you're in California, those go way up. Um, I've seen some cheaper, but most of them had rebuilt titles. So I think this is a pretty good deal. I know it's a straight car. I can modify it in the future. It's got some things that I wanted to do regardless, like the exhaust and the uh, interior, so I don't have to mess with that, so that's saving me money. But it does have the rust issue, so. Another rusty car on the old, good old garage topics garage, but we'll get taken care of. It's nothing like the truck, it'll just be a, it'll be some paint work to make sure that it's good versus it's structural. Don't wanna deal with that anymore. The previous owner included a ton of stuff. He included the wooden, custom made at home ramps to get the car up in jacks. He included a lot of parts from the old engine because he didn't want to swap stuff over. So the air conditioning system is from the AP1. He didn't want to disconnect the lines and have stuff go everywhere. So that's on the car. So he included the AP2's AC compressor, starter, alternator, 
Tons of little trinkets, the S2000 emblems on the side because it's missing that. Also included uh, AP1 stock style bumper. It was held on by zip ties according to the previous owner and it's got a ton of mashed up stuff. It probably could be cleaned up so I might look into putting that on. Also has the owner's manual, uh, both in PDF form and printed out, which is cool. And I think just the fact that I know about the previous history of this car makes it worth a lot more to me personally. I just feel like it's got a good future ahead of it. I've driven it a good 150 miles now and had no issues whatsoever with it, which is one of the first and garage topics of the world. I've always had some kind of issue. I'm really excited to start sharing videos. I wanted to show you this before I started cleaning it up and stuff. Next video is gonna be first-hand driving experiences. I'm gonna take you on the route that I take to work every day, which will explain probably why I got this car. It fits it perfectly. Pretty excited, so I just wanna get stuff out there, start sharing, but I'm gonna do a restoration slash build slash project. So lots of small things, lots of big things gonna do to the car over the next year or so, so I'm gonna be sure to document everything, make videos, update the YouTube channel, update the social media stuff, and probably build up the website a little bit better to support what I'm doing on the channel. If you have any questions about the S2000 or any comments, feel free to leave me a comment down below, or if you want, like it, subscribe, tell your friends. I mentioned tell your dogs, but I don't think they have the ability to subscribe on Facebook, so um, tell them, but tell the owners to subscribe if you can. That's all I got. I'm really excited, super excited. Strong emotional bond was with the G8. This is just, I like the car. I genuinely like it. It's not internet telling me to like it. It's not channel telling me to like it. I just genuinely like it. It's cool looking, fun to drive. Next video will show why it's fun to drive. Thanks a lot for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one. Oof, shouldn't have eaten all that pizza.